The Earth is flat. No, don't tell people that. Can you prove otherwise? Yes, there is a lot of evidence to show that the Earth is a globe. I mean, just look at photographs from space. <sighs> Those are taken by NASA. They're all fake. Why would NASA fake photos? They lie about their space program in order to get more funding. People have known for ages that the world was flat until NASA came along. Well, that's not true. Scientists have known that the world was round since long before space travel. How would they have known that? By using sun rays to measure the circumference of the Earth. What? Recently, I joined a Flat Earth forum in order to learn more about the Flat Earth model. I talked about measuring the size of the Earth using shadows and asked, what is the distance from the Earth to the Sun in the Flat Earth belief? And I received some interesting hostility. Really? I was told that Flat Earthers don't have beliefs, only Globe Earthers have beliefs, and that my sticks and shadows were nonsense. Suffice it to say, I never got my answer. You can't use sticks and shadows to measure the Earth. Maybe I can't, but you can. Especially if I get help from people all across the globe. Don't say that. Don't say what? Across the globe? Okay, if I get help from all of you across the Earth. In this video, I'll explain how our ancestors measured the size and shape of the Earth. And in my next video, I'll show you how we can do it today even better. And just maybe, you all can help me measure the Earth using nonsense sticks and shadows. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. So, what's this weird approach you're using to measure the Earth with sticks and shadows? Well, it's nothing new. In fact, this process was first used by Greek scientists over 2,000 years ago. Eratosthenes was a Greek scientist around 200 BC. He was a chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria. He knew that there was a place south of him called Syene, which is current day Aswan, Egypt. At this place, at high noon, on the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, a vertical rod, or gnomon, would cast no shadow. Additionally, if a person looked down a deep well, their own shadow blocked their reflection of the sun in the water. This meant that the sun was directly overhead Aswan on this day. However, back in Alexandria on this same day, a gnomon did cast a shadow. Eratosthenes measured the length of this shadow, and using some trigonometry, he calculated that the angle was about seven degrees. Seven degrees is about one fiftieth the way around a full circle. Eratosthenes hypothesized that the Earth was round and that its circumference was about 50 times the distance between Alexandria Alexandria and Aswan. Eratosthenes then hired professional bemidists. What's that? These are professional walkers who would measure distances on foot. He hired them to measure the distance between Alexandria and Aswan. They recorded a distance of 5,000 stadia, which would mean that the circumference of the Earth would be about 40,000 kilometers. As it turns out, this is incredibly close to the circumference of today's globe Earth model. That doesn't prove the Earth is round, just that the angle of the Sun is different at two different points on the Earth. The same would be true on a flat Earth. Well, what if we recorded the angle of the sun at several locations on the Earth? If we first look at the globe model, we see that the Earth looks like this, with the North Pole here, the South Pole here, and the equator here. At high noon during the equinox, we expect the sun to be directly over the equator. Since the sun is very far away in the globe Earth model, the rays of sunlight are essentially parallel to one another across the entire Earth. That means if we were 30 degrees north of the equator, then at high noon on the equinox, we would expect the angle of the sun to be 30 degrees south from directly overhead. If we were at 45 degrees north latitude, we would expect the sun to be at 45 degrees. If we were at 60 degrees, we would expect the sun to be at 60 degrees. And if we were at the North Pole, 90 degrees north latitude, we would expect the sun to be right on the horizon at 90 degrees from overhead. The same would be true for the Southern Hemisphere. But now, let's look at the Flat Earth model. If we flatten out the Earth while keeping the same sunlight angles, we see a different phenomenon. Now we see that the sun rays are no longer parallel. In fact, in the Flat Earth model, the sun is actually a lot closer to the Earth. But how far exactly would it be? The lines don't converge to a single point above the Earth. If we're at the equator, the sun is still directly overhead. If we were at 30 degrees north latitude, we would think the sun is almost 6,000 kilometers over the Earth. If we're at 45 degrees, we would think the sun is 5,000 kilometers over the Earth. If we're at 60 degrees, we would think the sun is nearly 4,000 kilometers over the Earth. And if we're at 90 degrees north latitude, we would think the sun is zero kilometers over the Earth. These sun rays that we got from the globe Earth model don't work in the flat Earth model. There is no way that both of these models can be accurate. And that's sort of the point here. If we were to measure these shadows across the globe, the globe, if we were to measure these shadows across the Earth, 
we should be able to invalidate incorrect models. I mean, the shadows are a dead giveaway here. So what would you do? If we were able to record the sun at high noon on the equinox at different latitudes across the, uh, across the Earth, then we should be able to map out the shape of the Earth. How would that work? For the globe Earth model, the angle of the sun from overhead is easy to calculate. It's equal to your latitude. For the flat Earth model, the angles will be different because they need to converge to a single point at a particular height above the Earth. Unfortunately, I found it very difficult to find out how far away the sun should be in the flat Earth model. Even the flat Earth wiki, and yes, that is a real thing on the internet, doesn't give one straight answer. Who knows what the answer is? I even joined a flat earth forum and tried asking flat earthers about the distance from the earth to the sun. And let's just say I did not get any useful information, mostly just hostility. We love our memes, but I can guess what I think should be a good answer that would match the sun rays from the globe earth model. How do you do that? Here, I plotted the latitudes from the equator to the north pole. I'm assuming the distance from the equator to the north pole is 10,000 kilometers. In the globe earth model, the latitude should match the angle to the sun at high noon on the equinox. Below, I have the angle to the sun using the flat earth model. As I increase the height of the sun over the equator of the flat earth, I have the angles we would expect to see from each latitude. The angles in green are the ones that match the globe earth angles, and the ones in red have the greatest difference. We can see that if the sun is zero kilometers above the equator, none of the angles match, except for the one at the North Pole. As we increase the height of the sun, we can see that at different heights, we get better matches at some latitudes, but worse at others. Crucially, however, we are never able to get all the angles to match. We're never able to get all angles to be green, which is fundamentally the issue here. The shadows in the globe earth model and the flat earth model cannot coexist. The shadows are always going to have discrepancies somewhere on the earth. So then what's the point of all this? Well, if I just play around with the height of the sun, I'm able to find a compromise that seems to work the best. What? As I move the sun up and down and see how much green I get, I can find the height which has the least discrepancies. Here, at 6,000 kilometers, we see that the angles near the equator are pretty good and don't really diverge until about halfway to the North Pole. The angles close to the pole are red, but those are really hard to get green no matter what we do. This height seems to give me green angles at most latitudes except near the North Pole. This is actually not too bad since most people don't live near the North Pole, so these divergences may not be that noticeable. Again, I've omitted the Southern Hemisphere for simplicity, but I believe even in the Flat Earth model, these latitudes should have the same results as their counterparts in the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm going to assume that the Sun is 6,000 kilometers from the Earth in the Flat Earth model. Flat Earthers can feel free to fight me in the comments if they feel this answer should be different. Okay, but this is all just theory. How do you expect to actually test any of this? Well, this is why I wanted to build a sundial, or whatever this thing is called. If I can build a contraption that easily measures the angle of the sun, then I can make several of them and ship them around the world to all of you in order to measure the sun at your latitudes. Can't people just measure this on their own? Why do you have to build anything at all? Well, this whole process of measuring the sun can be a difficult one, especially if you want accurate measurements. First, I want to remove the need for anyone to have to do any trigonometry. So, for a given pole height, I've printed out the angles for you. I wrote a little Python script that generates an SVG file, which prints out all of the angles for a 12-inch high pole. I print out concentric circles for every degree away from the pole. This is basically just calculating the radius of the circle by taking the height of the pole and multiplying it by the tangent of a given angle. In this manner, I can loop through every degree of latitude, or even half degree, and determine the radius of the circle to draw. The degrees in red indicate the angle of the sun from overhead. So right at the pole, they are zero degrees and go up from there. For convenience, I've also provided the elevation of the sun from the horizon in green. The green number is the angle up from the horizon. The red number is the angle down from overhead. These two numbers are just complements of one another. This will allow the user to just look at the shadow on the piece of paper in order to determine the elevation of the sun and consequently their latitude on the earth. And that's the motivation behind building this device, to allow people to conveniently measure the angle of the sun wherever they are. How hard is this to build? Well, that's a great question. In my next video, I'll show you my attempt at actually building an accurate prototype that is both cheap and easy, so that ultimately all of you can help me measure the size of the Earth. We need your help in order to measure the sun all across the globe. Globe? I mean Earth! Earth! Ah!